All right, today we're going magnet fishing. That's where you take a big magnet tied to a rope, you throw it in the water and you see what you can find. I know there's a ton of stuff in there. There's T-posts, shell casings. I've lost a million fishing lures. My son is obsessed with magnet fishing videos. So we've got this kid on the internet. You tie it to a rope, you throw it in there, you see what you can find. It probably doesn't seem like there's anything philosophical about magnet fishing. And in, in one sense, there's not. Aristotle said, what does one do with one's leisure? That is the main question. And this idea of leisure is actually really important to the Stoics. In fact, actually the root word of leisure is, is school. Like it's learning is something you do that's different than work. So this idea of hobbies, finding ways to practice philosophy, but also learn something about yourself, learn how to do something is, is a really key Stoic thing. And especially, I mean, all the Stoics were really hard workers. They needed things to relax, to decompress. Even 2000 years ago, we get from Seneca that Socrates liked to, you know, play with kids in the neighborhood. Cato liked to have long dinners where, where wine flowed freely. Scipio learned how to play a musical instrument. Even I think, you know, what we know from Seneca, his letters must have been some form of leisure activity. I have a chapter in, in Stillness is the Key about the power of hobbies. William Gladstone would famously chop down trees on his property. Churchill was famous for walking around his estate and feeding the ducks and the fish and, and most of all, painting and bricklaying. And I think these are actually deeply philosophical things. They're on the one hand, totally meaningless hobbies, but if they help you do what you do better, they're deeply important. There's a, a scene we get from Churchill, again, a guy who understood hobbies, and he talks about walking into the Oval Office on one of his visits to the United States where he's, he's working with Roosevelt as they're trying to come up with a strategy to win the Second World War. And FDR is sitting at the Resolute desk going through his stamp collection. They're like making decisions that affect the outcome of the most significant conflict in human history, the lives of millions of people. And FDR is like pouring over these stamps, which is a totally meaningless, ridiculous hobby. And yet it's actually really interesting and to him. And, and it was a way to relax, to decompress, to, to focus his mind somewhere else. And Seneca talks about, he's like, if you exhaust the mind, it breaks. You need different activities, whether that's walking or spending time with friends or doing some sort of hobby. And so for me, the reason we wanted to do this magnet fishing thing is one, my, my kid was really obsessed with it, but in one sense, mindless, but on the other hand, it forces you to be really present. You're throwing out this line and then you're just pulling on it and you have to be really sensitive to whether you know anything's connecting with it. If you're feeling anything different, you're out in nature. I actually love actual fishing more, but it's the same thing. You know, you cast the line out, you're waiting, you're being patient, you're reeling it in. The pointlessness of it that makes it special. Joseph Piper was a German philosopher and he talks about this. He has this brilliant essay called Leisure. And he's saying that the ability to be at leisure is one of the most important things we do as humans. And that one of the things he defines leisure by is, is there a purpose to it? And if there's a real purpose to it, like you're doing it to get in shape or you're doing it to make money as like a side hustle, if you're doing it to impress somebody, then it doesn't count. And so one respect when you're thinking about these hobbies, like the pointlessness of it is the point. Like human being, not human doing, we're just being while we're doing something for the sole purpose of nothing. I actually think there's something really powerful in that and actually really stoic about it. Like when I go for walks, I actually remind myself, this walk is not exercise. It's not why I'm doing it. It is here for its own purpose. And when you're trying to cram in meaning to it, you're doing it wrong. It was pouring rain. It was freezing cold one of the days. We got nothing. The higher ground is a little better. But it was so much fun. And I remember a couple times I would ask my son, I'd be like, are you cold? Do you want to go inside? And he's like, no, I don't want to go inside. And there's something I think children get about these activities. Like when my son's playing Legos, I say like, do you want to build something? And he doesn't, he just wants to play Legos. I remember one time I was in the pool with my wife and I said, do you want to swim laps or something? She said, no, let's just be in the pool. And I think that's a 
part of hobbies. So for Churchill, painting really challenged him in all these different ways. If you look at Churchill's paintings, they're not particularly good, but it was, I think the fact that he wasn't good at it was part of it, but it was also forcing him to use muscles or parts of himself that he wasn't usually using and he wasn't using them as part of his job. Like he was practicing being really observant. He was practicing noticing the beauty in things. He was practicing noticing the colors. He was forced to just be in one spot where nothing was happening. And I think that what I liked about the magnet fishing was that you couldn't devise something more different than the process of writing, which you're sort of creatively engaged. You have your books, you're inside long periods of time, you're listening to music, you're trying really hard to say something that you think is really important. But magnet fishing is throwing a magnet in the water tied to a rope, hoping that maybe it'll connect to some piece of scrap metal that you'll feel glom on, you'll, you'll pull it in. And so on the one hand, it's so different. And on the other hand, there is a similarity to writing, which is the patience, which is letting the magnet of your mind sort of find things that maybe you didn't think were there. Churchill actually says the most important thing that a public man can have is one or two hobbies. And he said, and they have to be real. Like they have to be physical. Your hobby can't be like, I like music, right? Your hobby has to be like playing music or your hobby has to be like collecting vinyl records or your hobby has to be, you know, recording music or, or it has to be real. And so there, there was something real about this today. We had such a good time as a family. I think there's another part of it, which is that we learned something, right? Like we learned, hey, there's actually a lot less stuff in, in the lake behind our house than we thought. And that like we got online and we read more stuff about it. And we, you know, we learned about the best methodology. And like the main thing they said is you want to go to places where there's lots of sort of traffic or, or people flow. So there's a river down the street from here. So we're going to go to the river one weekend and we're going to do it again. Herbert Hoover actually wrote a book called Fishing for Fun. And then in parentheses, the subtitle is, or how to wash your soul. And I don't think he's, it's not the water, but there is something that washes and cleanses the soul about leisure. Something that allows us to rub off the dust of earthly life, which is something that Marcus Aurelius talks about. Something that washes away the, the detritus and the distractions and all the things we accumulate in the busyness of our jobs and our relationships and entertainment in modern life and allows us to just be present and connected for a second. And this magnet kit costs $30. And we got way more value out of that 30 bucks than just about anything we've done in many, many months. The power of hobbies is real. And it's a, it's a philosophical, it's a soul power. It connects to something about what makes us human. And that's, that's why Joseph Piper's talking about it. That's why Churchill's talking about it. That's why Marcus Aurelius is talking about it. He says, don't be bounced around. Go take some leisure time, connect, read a book, go outside, pick up trash by the side of the road, start collecting stamps, go hunting. It doesn't matter what it is. The fact that Scipio is playing the flute and Socrates is playing games with kids in the neighborhood and Cato is, is drinking wine with friends. Seneca is talking about three radically different hobbies. They have nothing in common except what they evoke from the person while they're experiencing that. It's just a deeply important thing and I hope you make time for it and I hope you allow yourself to see it as something valuable to you and at the same time, don't turn it into a job, don't turn it into something you're trying to, to become the best at, don't turn it into something you're trying to make money from, don't turn it into something you broadcast on social media so everyone knows how interesting or cool you are. Do it because you deserve it. Do it because it washes your soul and it allows you to practice philosophy in a different way. That's the power of hobbies. And that's why I went magnet fishing. And that's why I got a ton out of it, even though literally we found nothing but a single pair of pliers. For the Stoics, wisdom was an ongoing process. It was a journey. Zeno said that well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. So how do we do that? Well, I suggest the Daily Stoic email. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. One email every single day, totally free. The best wisdom and insights from the Stoics, from Zeno to Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus and Seneca. Sign up, start your journey. Let me know what you think.